Hey boys, it's Harm9. Today we're going over 10 of the best amphibious vehicles in Grand Theft Auto Online. Now there are only 10 amphibious vehicles in GTA Online, so the the selection pool was pretty small for this uh, for this listing. But I do feel like we have a pretty good video for you guys today, so we're gonna hop into it. We're gonna start off with uh, with the worst of the amphibious vehicles with uh, with number 10. So let's get into it. Alright guys, starting off with number 10, we have the Dodo. Now the Dodo is, well, a float plane. Now the Dodo is uh, one of my least favorite vehicles in the game, and you'll know why if you've ever had to do an MC cell mission. Um, this vehicle is pretty awful, and for that reason I'm not even going to step foot in it. We're just going to do that, and uh, that's, that's it for number 10. Let's move on to number 9. Alright guys, and at number 9 we have this behemoth. Uh, this is the Tula. The Tula is very expensive, it goes for just over 5 million dollars, which is... I don't know. Um, anyways, the Tula is effectively an Avenger that's not an Avenger, and it, it's just... I don't really understand how this vehicle works. <laughs> like, I, I, I mean, I guess I understand how it works. It's like a VTOL, and then if I press E on keyboard, it will become not a VTOL anymore. Um, as you can see, the Tula is great at flying. It's really, really, it does a great job. It's very uh, capable. Um, this vehicle is very slow, and it's really not that great of a plane in my opinion. Um, there might be some people that get offended at that, but uh, I think for the most part, we can probably all agree that it's not the greatest vehicle ever. Uh, being that this is the amphibious vehicles list, the Tula is an amphibious plane, um, much like the Dodo. Except this one's a little bit different than the Dodo, you can just like kind of land on the water and then coast along the water with this plane, to my understanding. Unless something's going to go catastrophically wrong here, but I don't think it is. It looks like we're just coasting in the plane, so... Actually, this plane is pretty cool. I'm not gonna lie. I am I am kind of impressed with this thing. I might even customize this now that I've had to buy it. So, hey, if you guys want to see that, let me know in the comments down below. With that being said, let's move on to number eight. All right, guys, next up we have the Blazer Aqua. Now, the Blazer Aqua is actually a pretty cool vehicle. It goes for $1.7 million, which I don't understand how it's even possible for a quad to cost that much money, but it does have front-mounted machine guns. I believe these are the exact same ones that are on the Night Shark, although I could be wrong. Now, of course, the Blazer does have the ability to, well, as you can see, sail, and you can apparently raise and lower this thing. Oh, yes. Okay, cool. So, essentially, it's a jet ski that's also a quad. It's kind of dope, actually. And it's actually really, really fast. I gotta say, I'm pretty impressed with this thing so far. I might actually even use this in the future. I don't know. We'll have to see. But, I mean, for what it is, it, it's a jet ski with machine guns that can be a quad on land. So, what's kind of not to like about it, you know? Other than the fact that it's 1.7, almost 1.8 million dollars. I mean, it's kind of cool. I gotta say, I am, uh, I am impressed. Most of the amphibious vehicles in GTA are pretty cool. Now, the Blazer Aqua will also allow you to launch the mission called Amphibious Assault, I believe. Uh, I believe that is what you get with this vehicle. Of course, you need to own a vehicle cargo warehouse in order to own this thing, so that is something you're going to need if you are interested in picking one of these things up. Anyway guys, I think that's pretty much it for the Blazer Aqua. Let's move on to the next vehicle. The so next up we have the Sea Sparrow. Uh, so this is basically a sparrow with pontoons on it, which is actually pretty cool. Obviously the Sea Sparrow is just, well, a sparrow with, well, yeah, pontoons on it so it can land in the water. It's, uh, it's not rocket science here, it's just GTA boys. So as you guys can see, Sparrow just kind of kind of glides along the water. Now I'm pretty sure that if I keep descending, I think I can actually make this thing go into the water, or maybe I can't. What happens if I land like this? It's not good. Okay, nothing good happens. Okay, um, now the Sea Sparrow goes for about 1.8 million dollars, so it is a little more on the expensive side. However, it is a pretty cool vehicle, and if you do crash it in the water, you can basically drive it upside down, or well, not really drive it or sail it or anything. You can just kind of sit in it while it floats whatever way you kind of crashed. So. Anyway, pretty cool vehicle. Uh, not the best vehicle ever, but it is pretty cool. Definitely some better ones coming up though, so let's get into those. We're gonna move into number six. All right, guys, next up we have the Karen Technical Aqua. Now the Karen Technical Aqua is actually one of the more useful sort of vehicles on this list. Um, obviously not the most useful ever, but we are getting into some of the more useful vehicles as far as the amphibious vehicles go. 
Now you will get the Karen Technical Aqua on some certain missions, especially bunker resupply missions. I've got this thing several times when I've been resupplying my bunker. The gun on the back is actually really, really good. It does super high damage. It's not the most accurate thing ever and it does take a second to shoot it. It is a really, really good gun and it's also got some crazy good range on it. I would say that this thing could probably shoot 500 yards, which is pretty impressive all things considered. Basically, if they're in your render distance with that gun, you can probably hit them, which is kind of nuts. As far as the technical Aqua's actual performance, as far as driving goes, it's not going to be the fastest vehicle ever, but nobody was really expecting it to be, I don't think. However, if you were, well, it's it's not going to be the fastest vehicle ever. I'm, I'm sorry to tell you that. Now, if you guys are interested in this vehicle, it will cost you about $1.5 million, which isn't exactly cheap, but it's also not very expensive, all things considered, especially given the really good gun that this thing has on it. I, I would be willing to pay that price, and I obviously I did because, well, I have one. I, I only bought it for the video, but hey, I might use it in the future. We'll have to see. Obviously, this truck is also pretty good for off-roading, so it's overall a pretty useful vehicle, I feel like. Not something that I would drive every day, but you could probably drive it every day if you did want to. Anyway, guys, that is pretty much it for the Technical Aqua. Let's move into the next vehicle on the list. All right, guys, next up at number five, we have the Rune Zaba. Now, this is actually a somewhat useful vehicle in Grand Theft Auto Online. The Rune Zaba can take the most RPGs out of any regular personal vehicle in the entire game. It can take a whopping 14 RPGs or 14 homing missiles as well, which is pretty cool. Now, of course, the Zaba is also an amphibious vehicle like you guys can see right now. Now, the Zaba does have quite a few downsides, unfortunately. It's, uh, it's not exactly the greatest vehicle ever. Given the really short wheelbase, it's not very maneuverable on the road. And it's also not very fast, so there's not a whole lot of good that comes with this thing, but there is some good. Obviously, having that much armor and also being amphibious are two of the good things that this thing does, so I figured that it is a little bit more useful for the average person than the Technical Aqua or any of the vehicles that I've previously listed in this video. That's why I got this high of a ranking. But don't get me wrong, the vehicles ahead of this thing are much, much more useful than the Rude Zaba. So don't worry, the list is going to get better from here. All right, guys, next up we have the Sea Breeze. Now this is a vehicle that I've been told a lot about in my comments, and I wanted to try it out for myself, so I bought it, and that's kind of what inspired me to make this video and spend a bunch of money on more amphibious vehicles that I'm probably never gonna use. Now the Sea Sparrow is really interesting because with enough speed, the Sea Sparrow can actually dip underneath the water. I'm going to demonstrate this for you guys right now. We're going to go way up in the air and we're going to go straight down towards the water. And you guys will be able to see here in a second, we went right underneath the water and we bounced right back out of it. Now the Sea Sparrow is really interesting because you can actually land this thing right on the water like you guys can see right here and it will just kind of float along. And then when you want to take back off from the water or if you're underwater and you want to take back off, you can do that too. As you guys can see, we were fully submerged right there and we just get back into the air. The Sea Breeze is really, really cool for that reason. I do really like this plane, honestly. And I'm, uh, I'm, I'm thankful for you guys recommending it to me in the comments. It's actually very, very neat. Other than that, the Sea Breeze isn't super notable, but it is a pretty cool plane, I have to say. It is, of course, a two-seater as well, so you can have a co-pilot with you while you're doing these uh, sort of aquatic stunts, if you will. Anyway guys, that is pretty much it for the Sea Sparrow. Let's move on to number three. All right guys, moving into the vehicles that are actually very, very useful and aquatic or amphibious, we have the Stromberg. Now, the Stromberg is a great counter to the Oppressor Mark II in Grand Theft Auto Online, albeit not the greatest counter, but it is a pretty good counter. The missiles on this thing are very, very aggressive. They will track pretty much anything until they kill it. Sometimes you can get away on a Mark II from a Stromberg. It's not exactly the greatest and most foolproof vehicle to use against a Mark II, but it is pretty good. Now the Stromberg also has machine guns that are mounted on the front of the vehicle that do very, very good damage actually. You can fry cars pretty darn quick with these things. Now the only beef that I really have with the Stromberg is it's not a very fast vehicle and it doesn't really have any special abilities other than the fact that it can go in the water. Which I can't really complain about because being able to go into the water with a car is pretty cool in itself. As you guys can see it turns into the James Bond car 
and you can just cruise it around underneath the water. Now instead of having missiles when the Stromberg is underneath the water, it switches to torpedoes which are really really good. Now I haven't personally killed anything underneath the water with these really, but from what I've heard they are pretty good. So if you need to take out a Kasatka or something like that, the Stromberg should probably be able to do it. Anyway guys, that is pretty much it for the Stromberg. This thing has a little bit of armor as well, but other than that there's nothing really notable about this vehicle. Let's move on to number two. All right guys, next up we have the APC at number two. Now the APC is a very useful vehicle in Grand Theft Auto Online. This thing has a lot of really cool features about it, and I would definitely say that it is the second most useful vehicle on this entire list. The APC can take about four to five RPGs depending on where you get hit with this thing. So it's not super armored, but it can take a few more homing missiles than that probably somewhere in the neighborhood of about 14. That is the average that I have heard for this thing. Now the APC is not a very quick vehicle unfortunately. It would be very, very overpowered if it was any faster than it is, I think. Now as you guys can see, you can drive this thing right into the water. And there you go, now you have a boat. Now the APC once it is in the water is quite a slow vehicle. You have to go in with some momentum if you really want to go anywhere fast, but even then you're going to run out of momentum eventually. So just be advised that uh, it's not going to be the fastest aquatic vehicle ever, that's for sure. Now the APC is equipable with a SAM battery or you can just keep the stock cannon like you can see I've got on mine. The SAM battery is limited to 50 missiles I believe it is. Whereas this cannon is not limited to a certain amount of missiles at all, you can have as many shots as you want with this thing. Now, probably the coolest and most useful feature with the APC is the fact that you can switch from the driver's seat into the passenger seat with this vehicle and have a gun at your disposal very, very quickly. Now, the cannon on this thing can do an absolute ton of damage. It also has pretty decent range. Not enough to kill that boat that I'm shooting at right there, but pretty close. And then of course, when you're done shooting with this thing, you can just hop right back into the driver's seat and keep going. So the APC is a very, very good vehicle for solo players in online. If you're planning on doing some PVP or you wanna be able to defend yourself very easily, the APC is pretty good for that. However, the armor itself is not that great, like I said before. But overall, I do feel like the APC is a very useful vehicle in online. I'd like to see more people driving this thing. It really is pretty good, but it's still not as good as the vehicle that we have at number one. At number one, we have the Toreador, which is basically a Stromberg, but better in every single conceivable way. The Toreador is a four-seater vehicle, whereas the Stromberg is only a two-seater. Now, the Toreador also has front-mounted machine guns, very similar to the Stromberg, and it also has missiles that you can shoot out of the front of it as well. Now, the missiles on the Toreador and the Stromberg are exactly the same. However, the Toreador's lock-on range is much, much longer than the Stromberg, so you're going to have an easier time killing targets that are far away with this thing. And of course, like the Stromberg, being that this is an amphibious vehicles list, the Toreador can also go in the water. The one real advantage that the Toreador has over the Stromberg, though, is the fact that this thing is equipped with a rocket booster, which, as you guys can see, is kind of nice to have. You can fling yourself out of a hard position to get out of, or just boost yourself and go very, very quickly. The Toreador is my personal favorite amphibious vehicle in GTA Online. Definitely one of the best overall vehicles in Online because it also is just as armored as the Stromberg is, being able to take, I believe it is, seven Oppressor Mark II missiles before it blows up, which is pretty darn good. As you guys can see, we are under the water now, and I can switch into submersible mode, and here we are underneath the water in submersible mode. And very similar to the Stromberg, you can still shoot missiles out of this thing, except they have changed into torpedoes instead of missiles. So there you have it, guys. The Toreador is pretty much better than the Stromberg in every single way. You can also rocket boost underneath the surface of the water. Don't ask me how that works, but it does. Anyway guys, that has been the top 10 amphibious vehicles in Grand Theft Auto Online. Let me know what you thought of my list in the comments down below. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video as well, dislike if you didn't. Subscribe if you guys are new, and I will see you all in the next video. Until then, take care. Peace.